Welcome to your daily dose of Poverty Proof. How the rich think differently and how you can train your brain for wealth. Let's talk about something that gets me a little heated, passionate and excited. And it's the topic of wealth versus the state. We've all heard and we've probably all used the phrase, the government should do something about it. Now, my first book on wealth was titled, Is Your Thinking Keeping You Poor? And chapter one is titled, The State Versus Your Wealth Goals. Now, make no mistake, I see these two as being on opposite ends of an ideological scale. They are not on your side, and let me tell you why. In fact, I'll illustrate it with, a, with something that I saw this morning, and I'm still quite heated about this one. We have, in this country, we have had the longest lockdown period on Earth. We are a nation that has unusually high unemployment and massive levels of poverty. So now here we are, we're starting to go through the lifting of various levels of lockdown, and it's midwinter and it's extremely cold. People have been essentially forbidden from working by their own government who say that they're doing this in their interests. We start to lift the lockdowns and today I'm out driving and I see a man at the side of the road. Now you can tell that this man is a little poorer than most. He is struggling, he does not look particularly well dressed, and he's done the right thing. He's gone and chopped some firewood and he's setting up a little stand on the side of the road. Coldest week of the year, he's going to sell firewood. And there he is putting out his little sign saying X amount for X bags of firewood, and immediately a cop car pulls up and starts harassing him about the fact that he is selling at the side of the road. Now bear in mind, this is the militant arm of the same body that has forbidden our nation from working for the past couple of months. We have had unusually high levels of starvation, to which government ministers have, have responded that they are baffled to see that that was the case. Shut off the economy, forbid people from working, and then you get all surprised when they starve. So there's this man trying to start a small business. And Instantly, the police arrive and tell him that he can't do so, because petty by law, petty by law. Now, times that by a few million people, and it is no surprise why we have poverty in this nation. My country in particular is uh, ranks at something like 110th and falling, getting worse in terms of business freedom index. So you see it from the ground up. If you even try to sell firewood after two months of lockdown, they will shut you down. Now, let's ask the, the bigger, broader question. Can a government solve poverty? Can they create jobs? Can they create employment? The biggest real-world study of this one ever done was the Great Depression in the United States of America. And as a result of that one, they implemented social policies where they got people working, and the idea was to create government jobs. Much study since then has said that the Great Depression was prolonged for a seven year period, unnecessarily by government intervention. When governments get involved in trying to solve poverty, they make things worse. Let's ask a simple question. Can a government create jobs? Every government wanting election, every politician standing in front of a platform of people will say, I will create jobs. Now, it's not necessarily untrue, but they might mean one of two things. If they mean I will create government jobs, run for the hills, that country is going downhill. If what they mean is, we will get the hell out of the way and let people work, follow that person, your country will prosper. Here's why. Now imagine if you were, we're talking about creating a government job. It goes like this. You need a certain bare minimum of people to get jobs done. And in most countries around the world, you already have that bare minimum in place and you have more than what you need. Now, a government steps up and says, we're going to create jobs within government departments. That means that this guy over here who was already doing a job is going to get nine duplicates around him to do the same job. Why is that a problem? Well, anyone who's been in management for more than five seconds will know that when you duplicate, you dilute accountability. When it was just this guy's problem to get the job done, everything was on his shoulders and he had to get it done. Now that he's surrounded by nine other people, well, it's no one's job really, it just kind of didn't get done. That's how it works in the real world. You dilute accountability, everything gets worse. If you want to make service delivery worse, add more people. 
Now, let's talk about the actual prosperity created from that one. In business, where you have free trade, you do not play a zero-sum game. There is genuine growth. So, for example, if a, a company hires a number of people to do a job, they get the job done well, they can sell for greater profits, they pay salaries, these people take their salaries, they feed their families, they buy cars, they buy homes, everything that they buy supports another business, and the whole thing grows. It creates real prosperity. There is massive growth on a national level. What happens when you do it with a government? All right, here you go. You take 50,000 people and you employ them unnecessarily within a government body and they've got salaries. Well, yes, but those salaries are sponsored by the rest of us. So it is a zero-sum game. These people have gotten richer because those people have gotten poorer. You are not generating any new wealth whatsoever. What can a government actually do to promote prosperity? The answer is get the hell out of the way. We've seen this in countries like the United States at the moment has been repealing uh, business regulations for some years now and their employment has shot up to record level highs. That nation, the wealthiest nation on earth, had never seen such low unemployment prior to the COVID lockdown. Even as a result of the COVID lockdown and the loss of jobs uh, resulting from that one, since then they've added something like 2.5 million jobs, which is a record pace. It also worked in nations like India. India has an intelligent, capable workforce, incredibly hardworking people, but for many decades they were struggling. Then the government did something, which is actually to say the government stopped doing something. They repealed regulations, they got out of the way, and the employment levels shot through the roof. They are one of the fastest rising economic powers on earth, and people are starting to become wealthy there. And it is broad-based and it's uplifting everyone. What did the government do? Basically, they stopped stopping people. Moral of the story, let the guy sell his damn firewood. Times a million, you'll make a real dent in poverty. When you hear a government talk about creating jobs, ask what they mean. Do they mean creating government jobs, in which case run for the hills? Or do they mean, we're going to get out of the way, in which case that might work? All of which is to say, if you're sitting around waiting for a government to solve your poverty or to make you rich, you are barking up the wrong tree. They are not on your side. Ronald Reagan observed that they are the problem. Take back accountability. You need a personal internal locus of control if you want to become wealthy. A government, in wealth terms, is pretty much your worst enemy.